country. You guys want to see a phone camera battle? We got one for you right here, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra with a one inch sensor from Leica and Xiaomi versus the brand new iPhone 14 Pro Max with a 48 megapixel sensor. Which one will win, win photos and in video? Let's find out right now. Now we're doing a front facing camera. We're doing a video test with this right now. Actually recording myself here. Great dynamic range from the Apple iPhone here. Brand new 12 megapixel sensor on this. Looking great, looking fantastic. Good stabilization, shooting 4K 24 as you gotta do because Apple can do that and a lot of uh, these Android phones can't. But uh, let's now try the Xiaomi. All right, now we are shooting with the front facing camera here on the Xiaomi, but it only does 1080 at 30. So the iPhone automatically wins on this. Um, a lot of, I would say the stabilization on this could be better than the iPhone. This is pretty damn stable, but in terms of the overall look, the colors, I gotta give it to the iPhone on this. I think Apple is reigning supreme on this. They've always have with the front facing camera. They're doing a good job. Xiaomi's not quite there yet, but we haven't got to the main one inch sensor yet. We're still playing around with the smaller cameras thus far. Okay, so now I'm actually recording max resolution here on the uh, 12S Ultra 8K. 24p with the 12s ultra now the iphone doesn't do 8k so obviously the xiaomi will win in terms of resolution or will it we're gonna find out because i'm gonna record in 4k 24 we're gonna see which one is better and we are doing this in lower light situations so we're gonna be pushing these cameras tonight so now let's move to the iphone now we are testing out the iphone 14 pro max 4k 24p rear camera here I gotta say, iPhone's uh, color science has always been really good. The, the video's uh, capabilities have always been really good. So I'm guessing this might be the one to go with because are you really gonna shoot with 8K all the time? No, but how does the 8K look versus the 4K? It's not always about the numbers. Anyway, let us know in the comment section below. Now let's move on to some photography. So just first impressions after using that, I gotta say the iPhone's much easier to hold and use. And I do like that you have a two to three times optical zoom. And I'm putting an asterisk next to that because you're actually just cropping into the sensor versus a true optical zoom. But Apple's calling it that, so we'll call that for this video. This one just has a three times zero and obviously a wide. So you're not gonna have as much flexibility on the Xiaomi 12S Ultra versus this. But this one inch sensor, does it make a difference? I think it does. I really think it does. And I'm gonna do some other tests with it. We're gonna find out how good this sensor is and does it match up to the 48 megapixels here. Ooh, this is gonna be a battle royale. All right, so you know, let's shoot some lights. First impressions off that, the Xiaomi is gonna be a slower camera in lower light situation, but you're probably gonna get a sharper image. Here's the thing though, the flaring that's coming off the iPhone lenses, you're starting to see that already with lights. This has always been a problem with the iPhone cameras for quite some time. I wanna see how bad it is or if it's improved here on the 14 Pro Max. But with this 12S Ultra, pretty much no flaring whatsoever. They control it very well. This is probably thanks to Leica and some of their technology and what they're sharing with Xiaomi. But this is a big difference versus the uh, iPhone when it comes to lens flare. Anyway, let's go down the alley. Let's take some low light shots and see how well these perform. Stress test, baby. All about the stress test. Watch your step. Looking at these two images right here, you're gonna see that the Xiaomi's got much better bokeh, much, much, much better, and it's not using a portrait mode. This is a straight out of camera. This is the deal with this uh, larger camera that you're gonna notice in this, and that's where this depth of field, this natural depth of field is gonna come into play. Now, of course, I could do this a little bit more, you know, enhancements with portrait mode on the iPhone, but we're not gonna get there just yet. We're still playing with the camera as it performs natively. But I gotta say, between these two, it's close, but the depth of field, the more naturalness to the image goes to the Xiaomi. Ooh, this is cool with the lights. Oh, that's cool, man. This is cool. Looking at those two images here, Apple's reds are much more of a punchier red where the Xiaomi's more got more somewhat, somewhat of a pink hue. Again, you can change the colors from like authentic to like a vibrant on the Xiaomi. That's kind of your two color choices on that. But I would say that in terms of 
exposure, I might give it to the Xiaomi for being a little bit brighter. The iPhone seems to be a little bit darker in that situation, trying to balance everything out. But, hmm, I'm gonna take that back. I think iPhone's exposing better. It might not be as bright, but you're seeing more detail in the shadows in the darker areas versus the Xiaomi, which you're gonna see a much more brighter highlights and darker shadows. More film mask, more that kind of vibe versus where the iPhone's gonna probably try to expose everything properly. Anyway, let's shoot some more lights and some more, uh, more of this. Let's get down to it. Which one's an iPhone? iPhone, show me. Which one do you like better? Uh, now it's uh, Oppo or better. Which one? <laughs> Oppo. Which one? iPhone? Which one out of these two photos? What do you like better? Uh, this one is better. iPhone. This, this is Xiaomi. Uh, Xiaomi is better. Okay. He says Xiaomi is better. I got to say, in this image, I got to agree with it. Xiaomi takes it. Thanks, yeah, man. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. We're going deep into the darkness. You better bump with that ISO there, Zeno. Okay, so people are not normally gonna shoot in this kind of a dark situation, but we're pushing these cameras a little bit. So I'm gonna actually pump this up here. And of course, I've, uh, Apple's got the ability to, with Deep Fusion and this photonic engine to really expose for brighter areas. And that's pretty good. That's pretty decent with the exposure on that. Details, you can see the LG uh, Aircon unit. That's with the Xiaomi, and that's with the iPhone. Now, here's the thing. You probably can't even see me at this point in time, so let me just light myself up here. What you're seeing out of the camera is probably closer to the iPhone. The Xiaomi almost looks like it's sunset versus nighttime. This looks more like nighttime, so I would say the more realistic image is the iPhone. But if you want that kind of brightness in nighttime, then the Xiaomi is going to be the winner in that. But in terms of detail, this one inch sensor, you are gonna let in more light. So I will give it to the Xiaomi for the detail in a lower light situation. Okay, now we're gonna try portrait mode with the iPhone. Now, if you first get your iPhone 14 Pro, Pro Max, or even for the 14, you might be noticing that your portrait mode look a little aggressive with the bokeh, very strong. Reason being out of the box, it's now set to 1.8, where Apple used to set it to 2.8 or F4, which has a more natural, closing the aperture down a little bit, but makes it look a little more natural for a phone versus a standard camera. Anyway, um, setting this here with F4.5, let's bring this down to 2.8, okay? Take a photo like that. And now you have one, two, and three times. Now we're gonna go to the Xiaomi. With this portrait mode, you just have one focal range, which is about a two compared to Apple's. Let's set it to 2.8 to be the same. Okay. All right, looking at these two images here, which are about close as we can to get to each other. I would say the color for the Xiaomi wins in this regard. It's a little more greenish hue. But in terms of the bokeh, if we zoom in, it might be a tad sharper around the Xiaomi, but at the natural fall off on the iPhone, looks a little bit more realistic. So for me, most natural bokeh would go to the iPhone, but in terms of color and in terms of detail, I'll give it to the Xiaomi. Let's go see these guys playing some chess. Let's go shoot some images over there. Usually they're pretty friendly about it. The Xiaomi's got a setting where you have auto night mode, kind of similar to what Apple has with their kind of longer exposure, but it's more aggressive than Apple's, would, I would say. So when you turn it off, you get a much more balanced exposure, but I'm gonna give it to the iPhone, much more uh, better detail and lower light in this regard, where the lights in the background, it's more in focus, the players are more in focus. So I got, I mean, based on what I'm seeing on the uh, screen right now, iPhone wins. If this is what I wanted to do with a mirrorless camera, this is exactly how I'd expose this. Unfortunately, the iPhone didn't fare so well. It overexposed it, and as a result, it looks a little bit hazy, not as sharp, whereas this one just pops. Now, this is what I'm saying where the Xiaomi sometimes gets it so right, so right, and the iPhone misses it, but there's other times 
the iPhone nails it too. So, man, this is tough. It's tough to say, but in terms of image quality, both of these are doing very, very well. This one inch sensor is a difference. You are going to notice it. But when it comes to the other cameras, the other lenses, it's going to be hard to say. But you know what we haven't tried, Zeno? Macro! That's it, Apple's got the best macro on a phone, hands down. This is friggin' impressive. Really impressive, that's all I need to do. One durian shot, Zeno, we got it. We already know what's gonna happen. Apple wins. Let's try this shot, this is interesting. Highs and lows, this is interesting. Dude, the iPhone balances that out really well. Look at that, much better really well controlled so as you could tell both of these cameras win in some areas and they lose in others this was not as easy of a battle as i thought it was going to be my personal opinion i thought the xiaomi with the one inch sensor would really put the iphone to shame but it did not as a matter of fact the iphone won in many of these categories when it comes to video especially but i have to hand it to the xiaomi for that very much more organic look and the better exposure and lower lights but when it comes to the overall performance of a camera phone, I have to give it to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I think they've done a tremendous job with this brand new sensor and all the other cameras in that regard. But this Xiaomi is just a beautiful camera and that Leica color, mwah. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and if you like this video, check more of our reviews right here.